Hello, I'm Susan Baida, co-founder of eCareDiary.com, and we're here at the Family Caregiving Summit, uh, sponsored by Emblem Health, and it's being held here right at the New York Academy of Medicine in New York City. Uh, that's some of the background noise you hear, and uh, we have the privilege of interviewing some of the speakers at the event today, and I uh, am very happy to introduce Dr. Tina Mashi, who is the Associate Professor of Fordham University Graduate School of Social Work and the recipient of the 2010 Geriatric Social Work Faculty Scholars Award, which was funded by the John A. Hartford Foundation. Welcome, Dr. Mashi. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Dr. Mashi, I was um, in the audience and I watched uh, your, pres your presentation and the documentary film and I'm completely fascinated by the subject of caregiving and the incarcerated. Um, please... Uh, uh, tell us about the subject matter and uh, a little bit about your presentation. Sure. Uh, I think that the astonishing thing to many people who first get introduced to this idea of caregiving among the incarcerated is because we have this preconceived notion that everyone in prison is labeled their behavior such as, for instance, being a murderer. Right. Um, or, or being a violent offender, we label them and we actually see and hear from the individuals as illustrated in the documentary Serving Life uh, that we showed a clip during my presentation is that they are human beings full of emotions, thoughts, feelings and um, uh, often very uh, kind and rehabilitated individuals and that they are playing the role in prisons, either informally, just helping one another, some people um, in prison, and or joining these peer, or t getting employed or, or volunteering for these peer support programs to take care of the dying while in prison. So uh, just to clarify uh, for our audience, uh, the subject matter is really about prisoners in prison caring for aging or chronically ill, uh, other chronically ill prisoners as well. So uh, essentially caregivers in prison caring for each other. Right. Like peer, peer caring. And uh, uh, arguably families of choice. They are in there together and a lot of uh, people get close. You know, granted, just like in society, we have factions that don't get along, fight, commit crime or, or, you know, that can happen in a prison, but not everyone inside a particular setting, community setting or institutional setting, uh, many of them are, are helping one another. Let me ask you, so um, I guess what, uh, what stimulated the interest in this particular uh, study and uh, focus on uh, prisoners and caregiving? Yeah, my uh, particular study looked at tr that I got funded for was trauma, coping, and well-being among older adults in prison, of which I got, got a lot of written information. It was a mail survey study, and so I got a lot of written information from participants in addition to the short answer surveys talking about their experiences of prison and surely they talk about the abusive situations in, in terms of medical neglect and officer mistreatment and violence amongst other inmates uh, but they also do talk a lot about in their letters that they've written to me about serving a helping role many of the elders in prison are like mentors to the younger people in prison and so those kinds of things came out uh, in my study, and that was also augmented by these growing uh, media coverage, including documentaries uh, for like so Serving Life, uh, that really show this I I intimate hospice setting uh, where you actually see not only the dying being helped, uh, but also the transformation, the emotional, spiritual transformation and quote-unquote correction of those that, uh, you know, in understanding empathy and remorse. Yes. And so it's pr quite profound. And, you know, I, uh, I only saw a glimpse of the uh, video, but just to, uh, to uh, let the audience know, the documentary is called Serving Life. And uh, do you know a little bit about who 
Sh- sure, it was put out by the Op- Oprah Winfrey's network, so you could find it on her website, or you can go to Amazon, uh, video, uh, Amazon.com uh, to and look buy it as an Amazon Instant Video or order the DVD. And it's called Serving Life. And uh, I guess uh, I know I could talk to you for at length about this subject because there's so much uh, that we can learn about it. And it's not uh, a subject that a lot of us think about in the world of caregiving because we're so focused on caring for a loved one. But this is certainly a very important area to consider because prisoners do age and there are prisoners who are there for life and need care. And I think you bring up another important point point about family because some of the things that came out in my study and I also did work within corrections for 15 years with all different age groups when somebody's in prison they also have family members who are dying on the outside yet they do not have the opportunity to be able to give that family caregiving families are separated uh, and and it, the question becomes the just and proportionate sentencing do we need to keep people in there so long that either side of the wall, someone might, a family member is suffering in need of family members. Yes. And, and so that's something to consider too. Or if the, you have a sick and dying person in your family in prison, you don't get access to them. And many people try. So if you think about the suffering that you've gone through, if you've known other people go, go, go through, just think about what is going on with that other family who cannot get to their to their family member due to these structural institutional barriers. Yeah. And my question to everyone, is this the society we wanted to create? Yes. I, I take the position, I do my research, but I take the position as a human being that has a, a, a input into what I think society should do is that I think we can find a better way. And uh, I, I'm of that opinion as well. Um, thank you so much for uh, being with us. This is, uh, I think, too short a video program to cover the, the depths of your study and, and research. And I want to thank you so much for sharing a little bit of it with our audience. And uh, we'd love to have you back on our radio Absolutely. show where we could talk, uh, I think, in more oh, detail. We could talk all day. Yes. And you can go to my website. Yes, I, I have a Google site. Just Google Be the Evidence Project. And you can find many of my publications on in this area. One more time. www.fordham.edu slash BTEP. I also have an external Google site. So if you Google Be the Evidence Project, you can find many downloadable publications for you, free and downloadable, available to the public. Thank you very much, Dr. Mashu. Thank you, Susan. Thank you.